Those guys should really take a lot of pride in, in the creativity and the inventions they came up with. Chris Hadfield knows all about the operation of mechanical arms. As chief of robotics for NASA astronauts, he's responsible for the shuttle arm's bigger brother, Canadarm2. Permanently fixed to the space station, Canadarm2 weighs in at 1,800 kilos, is 17 and a half meters long, and is capable of moving a mass of over 100,000 kilos. When the major structural components of the station make it into space, it's Canadarm 2's job to lever them into position. A job which requires detailed preparation and rehearsal on the ground, which Chris undertakes with Canadian Space Agency robotics instructor, Jamie Savigny. So once you've grappled it yep. and the, state, the shuttle arm has released it, sure. we're going to perform a roll, okay. like such, and then we're going to move it up. Okay. And we're going to, actually I should say you are going to <laughs> yeah. connect it to the, uh, the station. Okay, yeah. so I will still be on, uh, on grapple fixture number three here. Yep. And the other end will be down on the arm. So it's a pretty good reach for Canada Arm to get this thing there, huh? Yeah, it's, it's at its limits. Do we have uh, spacewalking astronauts out there giving us uh, any sort of uh, Not this guidance? Time. Okay, no. so it's purely done on the robotic views. Okay. I don't think people realize that even though they're up in microgravity, things still have a mass and in order to get something moving you still have to exert such a force and at the same time in order to stop it uh, you still require a great amount of force and humans just couldn't do that yeah moving something around that, that has a mass of 20,000 kilograms and trying to move around it's like like pushing a sailboat sitting next to the dock even though it's hugely massive you can get it started but if it gets going fast it can still crush your leg against against the, the dock As Space Shuttle Discovery awaits repairs, on Earth, work continues to get the major space station components completed and ready for departure. The man coordinating the various projects in Europe is Alan Thurkettle. From his home in Holland, he is coordinating work on the Columbus module in Germany, the Node 3 in Italy, and the Coppola observation deck now at Kennedy Space Center in Florida. In the Netherlands, he's also at the helm of the design and development of the ATV the European Space Agency's automated transfer vehicle. The ATV is an unmanned craft that will ultimately be responsible for supplying the International Space Station and the astronauts who live there with all they need to survive. This is the automated transfer vehicle mm -hmm. that will uh, be coming up there to uh, load best part of 20 tons of supplies for you. It, uh, it's the most complicated spacecraft we've ever built in, uh, in Europe, with a, a million lines of code on the thing, uh, all sorts of subsystems combining a human spacecraft with, uh, with all the, the satellites as well. It's a very, very complicated uh, vehicle. Complicated it may be, but across the Atlantic at the Kennedy Space Center, they have a complication of their own. Space. They've run out of it. Until we start flying more hardware and getting it out of the building, mm -hmm. floor space is going to be a real premium. And then once we have a manifest and we know when the trusses will start flying and the building will start emptying out, then mm -hmm. we can make a better plan for how we're going to yeah. accommodate the, yeah. the pressurized section and the other okay. external facilities. Billions of dollars of space station hardware sits and waits for the decision on the shuttle. It's on the floor of the high bay at Kennedy Space Center in Cape Canaveral, Florida. The Alenia facility in Turin, Italy. And here at the Space Transportation Division of EADS in Bremen, Germany. This module is a 10 payload, four and a half meter long laboratory where, when completed, astronauts will be able to conduct thousands of experiments in the weightlessness of space. Okay, so by 
But there's a major problem. The wires sent in from the United States are not compatible with the connectors here in Germany, causing an extended delay. To try and meet their deadlines, the team must press on. Node 3, designed to carry the life support systems for the International Space Station. Node 3 will also provide valuable additional docking ports for the new structures, crucial for the growth of the International Space Station. But like the Columbus module, it will go nowhere until the work here is complete. So what about the plan today, Dario? Well, uh, we basically have two activities. The first is uh, to check uh, the problem that we have found yesterday. That, uh, on was, the radar uh, beam? Yeah, on the radar beam. And uh, then uh, we will go ahead with the installation of the EMV valve. So that means that the overnight shift completed the RMS installation? Yes, so they have found no problem for this night. So. And still today we are proceeding with further two shift, first yes, and second again, shift? Yes, uh, again, second shift, again harness, and the third shift also again harness. Hopefully if we solve this uh, issue on the radial beam, uh, we are back on track, which is very Correct. good. In Italy, the Node 3 team are back on track. But in Germany, the Columbus module team are feeling the pressure. Head of systems engineering, Rudiger Kledzig, and project manager, Gunther Brandt, are behind schedule. Bernardo Patti, Columbus mission manager, wants some answers. Just realized that we have taken nine weeks of delay for Columbus reintegration, and we have taken two more weeks of delay for payload integration. So that makes 11 cool weeks. And uh, okay, if there is a lesson learned, fine, we should not get any more delay. If we don't learn the lesson, which is to control those open works, then we are going to expand this delay. And uh, I understand the shuttle is grounded. I understand a lot of things, but I don't care at all. You know what uh, we want, uh, which is our policy. Yeah, Just Leonardo, uh, I, I agree what you're saying. Yeah, and, uh, all the time, but... Uh, no, no. At the, moment, at the moment, uh, Bokart Schmitz and Paolo Artuzzi are sitting with a list and uh, the current schedule and uh, see how they can put those activities into the schedule. When the shuttles resume regular flights, one of the first pieces of hardware destined for the space station will be a part of the 300-foot integrated truss structure. The backbone of the space station, it will support a one-acre span of solar panels, providing the inhabitants with up to 110 kilowatts of power, enough to power 55 households. The external stowage platform is filled with hardware that will be installed on the station on future shuttle assembly missions when large truss structure components are delivered to the station to expand the station's electrical capability and to set the stage for the addition of other international modules such as the Europeans Columbus Science Laboratory and the Japanese Kibo module. Boeing managers David Bethay and Charles Hardison oversee the final assembly work on components at the processing facility at Kennedy Space Center. At line 42, hoisting the S5 truss to install UTAS bearings. Ready to this morning. 